In this lecture, we'll explore Windows at a deeper level. The Windows registry is one of the most important databases that has shipped with Windows since the beginning. So every single Windows version has a registry and that's where you can find information about every single hardware, application, users and a lot of the other details about the system. And any changes that are made to the system are updated in the registry as well. There's not much in the exam that's going to be about the registry, so we won't discuss this in detail, but if you're going to be a tech and you and troubleshooting Windows, you'll actually need to learn more about the registry. The registry is not really seen by casual users, so a lot of the regular Windows users may not even know that it exists. It contains not just the, the information about the hardware and software, but also user preferences, network information, file types, passwords, and so on. The registry is organized into five main subgroups. These are also called the root keys, and those are the H key underscore, classes root, current user, local machine, users, and the current config. And as the names imply, the HK classes root defines the standard class objects that are used by Windows. The HK current user and the HK users are used for storing the user preferences. So the HK current user stores the current user's preferences and the users is where you can find the, the information about other users. The local machine root key contains all the data for the system's non-user specific configuration. So this is about every device and every program on the computer. The HK current config is useful if you have multiple monitors or multiple systems that are running and then that way you can identify currently which one and what the config is of the current one. All the keys in the registries have a default value and you can change the, the, the values which are usually are in a string value, binary value, a D word value which are binary values but they're limited to 32 bits or keyword values which are values that are also in binary but they're limited to 64 bits. I will leave it to you to explore and learn more about the registry because for the purposes of the exam that's as much as you need to know. Now let's look at the, the boot process. The Windows installation creates a number of specific files and folders that the operating system needs to run. So some of these files and folders are directly on the root of the C drive and the others are in other places. Now the current Windows versions support both BIOS and UEFI boot processes. So these require the files that are written to the C drive. So let's look at the, the boot process for Windows XP, Vista, 7 and 8. So when you turn on the PC, the BIOS is loaded. Then the BIOS runs the code in the master boot record of disk zero. Then the master boot record runs code in the boot sector of the active partition. And the boot sector code runs boot MGR or the boot manager from the root of the partition. So basically the BIOS looks for the MBR, which finds the boot code to launch the operating system. So in, the, in a UEFI system, it's a lot simpler. There is no MBR, there's no GUID partition table or the file system boot code. So the UEFI simply loads the boot manager or the boot MGR directly. So you can see the Windows 10 boot sequence on the right. So in this case, we're using the secure boot. So the UEFI directly loads the, the OS loaders, the kernel, the system drivers, the system files, ELAM drivers, and any third-party drivers, any anti-malware, and then the Windows sign-in shows up. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. So this is the boot process when you're using the BIOS. The first one shows the standard boot process, and the second one is with full disk encryption, and the third one is the boot process with full disk encryption and a pre-boot 
authentication as well. So we'll see why we need the, the extra authentication. So as you can see, the first part, you see the BIOS and then it gives control to the hard disk. So within the hard disk, you have the MBR, the master boot record, which sends commands to the operating system, system files, and then the user data. The user data is where the actual data starts. So the sensitive system files start from the operating system part. So before that, you can add an authentication with an user ID and password or through a smart card, and that will provide the full disk encryption. Now, if you want to have another layer, then you can add an authentication, pre-boot authentication in front of that, and then that will allow for a full secure boot process for the BIOS version. Now in the Windows UEFI version, this is what happens. The device powers on, the firmware bootloaders are started, then the UEFI takes over, starts the boot environment, and then you get to the main operating system. So within the UEFI, you have the OEM UEFI applications that may run, and then within the boot environment, you have the Windows Boot Manager, which is the boot MGR, and that can boot to either the reset mode or the flashing mode. Now, if we break down the boot environment, then we can see that what actually the, the Windows Boot Manager is doing. So it launches something called the, the WPTMP.EFI, which is the offline crash dump. And then it also launches the, the mobile startup EFI, which is for charging, device reset, flashing, and update. It also makes use of the boot libraries and the boot configuration database. So in a generic system, like a Linux system, this is the boot process. It's actually pretty similar. So I will leave this to you to explore further and we'll look at the the more interesting parts which are securing the Windows 10 boot. So this is a diagram of what a secure Windows 10 boot looks like. Now trusted boot protects the PC from malware from the moment that you power on the PC until the anti-malware kicks in. The anti-malware is the Windows Defender that we discussed before. So in case that a malware has infected the PC, it can't remain hidden in this case. So some of the threats that you can see at this level are rootkits as we discussed before. And there are actually different types of rootkits. There are firmware rootkits, bootkits, kernel rootkits and driver rootkits. So the firmware rootkits overwrite the firmware of the PC's BIOS or the basic input output system. So Windows won't even start in that case. The boot kits will replace the operating system's boot loader which is the, the small piece of software that starts operating system. The kernel root kits replace a portion of the operating system's kernel so that the root kit can start automatically when the operating system loads with root access. And then finally, the driver root kits, these pretend to be one of the trusted drivers that Windows uses to communicate with PC hardware and they just get loaded as part of the other drivers. So the countermeasures for this are the secure boot, and you can also use a trusted boot. You can use an early launch anti-malware, which is the ELAM, and you can also use a measured boot, which provides you with a trusted boot and then compares the, the results with that. So the different ways of securing the boot process are shown here. You don't need to know all of this in this much level for the exam, but it's, uh, it's good to know, and if you want to explore more, you can do that as well. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.